The Angry Red Planet also called Invasion of Mars and Journey to Planet 4 is a 1960 science fiction film starring Gerald Moore and directed by I.B. Melchior. Distributed to theaters in late November and December 1959, The Angry Red Planet is listed by some motion picture references as a 1959 film, by others, such as the American Film Institute and Turner Classic Movies, as a 1960 production. Often such discrepancies are attributable to some references identifying a late in the year film like The Angry Red Planet by its release date, while other sources cite the film's official usually later copyright date. According to AFI, the copyright date for The Angry Red Planet no. LP 20393 is January 21, 1960. Melchior reportedly had an initial production budget of only $200,000 and was given just nine days to film it. Such financial and time constraints necessitated the use of Cinemagic, a film processing technique that combined hand-drawn animations with live-action footage. The relatively inexpensive process was used for all scenes depicting the surface of Mars. While Cinemagic proved unsatisfactory for creating visually believable special effects for the Angry Red Planet, producer Norman Maurer did reuse the process in 1962, although to a lesser extent, in the comedy film The Three Stooges in Orbit. Topic. Plot As the film opens, mission control personnel on Earth are monitoring the rocket ship Mr. One, Mars Rocket One, as it approaches Earth orbit following the first manned expedition to Mars. Personnel are surprised to see the ship on their monitors, for they believed that the vehicle had become lost or destroyed in space. Ground technicians are unable, though, to make contact with anyone on Mr. One, so they guide the rocket by remote control to a safe Earth landing. Only two survivors of the original four-person crew are found in the ship, Dr. Iris Ryan Nora Hayden, and Call. Tom O'Banion Gerald Moore, whose entire right arm is covered with a strange green alien growth. The Mr. One's mission to Mars is then recounted by Dr. Ryan as she also helps to find a cure for Call. O'Banion's badly infected arm. In her debriefing, she reports in detail the crew's experiences while traveling to the Red Planet and exploring its surface. She describes their expedition in retrospect, as if it were currently happening. After Mr. One reaches Mars and its crew explores the planet's surface, Dr. Ryan is attacked by a carnivorous plant, which Chief Warrant Officer Jacobs kills with his freeze ray, which he calls, Cleo. The crew then encounters an immense rat-bat spider creature, at first mistaking its legs for trees. That creature is blinded and repelled as well by Jacobs, who again uses his raygun. When the crew returns to their ship, they realize their radio signals are being blocked and the Mr. One is unable to leave Mars due to a mysterious force field. Obanyan next leads the crew to a Martian lake, where a city with high, impressive structures is visible on the other side, far in the distance. Crossing the water in an inflatable raft, they are stopped by a giant amoeba-like creature with a single spinning eye. The creature kills Jacobs and infects Obanyan's arm. The three survivors then return to the Mr. One and manage to lift off from the planet since the force field has somehow been deactivated. Unfortunately, Professor Gettle, the Mr. One's designer, dies of an apparent heart attack caused by the extreme stresses of the ascent. Once the Mr. One returns to Earth, O'Banion's infected arm is cured by medical staff using electric shocks. Mission control technicians also examine the Mr. One's data recorders from the expedition and find a recording of an alien voice, which announces that the ship's crew were allowed to leave Mars so they could deliver a message to their home planet. The voice then states that, We of Mars have been observing human development on Earth for many thousands of years and have determined that humanity's technology has far outpaced progress in cultural advancement. The alien then accuses humankind of invading Mars, warning that if future expeditions ever return to the Red Planet, the Earth would be destroyed in retaliation. Topic. Cast Gerald Moore as Colonel Thomas O'Banion Nora Hayden as Dr. Iris Irish Ryan Les Tremaine as Professor Theodore Gettle Jack Crucian as Chief Warrant Officer Sam Jacobs Paul Hahn as Major General George Trieger 
J. Edward McKinley as Professor Paul Weiner, Tom Daly as Dr. Frank Gordon, Don Lamond as TV newscaster, Martian voice, Edward Innes as Brigadier General Alan Prescott, Gordon Barnes as Major Lyman Ross, Jack Haddock a Lieutenant Colonel Davis, Brandy Bryan as Nurse Hayes, Joan Fitzpatrick as Nurse Dixon, Arlene Hunter as Joan. Aline Hamilton is Joan's friend. Topic. Production The Angry Red Planet began as The Planet Mars, a treatment written by Sidney Pink about a space voyage to Earth's mysterious neighbor. It was written on my kitchen table, Pink said in an interview a few years before his 2002 death. My kids were my critics, they'd tell me what was good and what just fell flat. Pink gave his treatment to Mel Cheer after meeting him at a party. Mel Cheer believed the project had potential, so he offered to help write the screenplay if Pink allowed him to direct the film. While Mel Cheer worked on establishing a working script, Pink met Maurer, who was developing Cinemagic, a revolutionary filming process for creating special effects by combining hand-drawn images with live action. However, it soon became apparent the process would not be able to deliver what had been promised with respect to the quality of its effects. The damn cinemagic didn't work like it should. Pink recalled. It was supposed to be sort of a 3D effect. What we came up with was great anyway. The production budget for The Angry Red Planet may have actually been significantly higher than the $200,000 cited by most film and press references. In its online catalog, the American Film Institute refers to a contemporary report in The Hollywood Reporter that announced an increase in allotted funding for the project more than double the frequently given figure. AFI states. As noted in a HR news item, just prior to the start of production, the film's budget was raised from $250,000 to $500,000. Comments made by Pink on the eve of filming provide some evidence regarding how little money was spent to design and build sets for the production. In an interview for a September 7, 1959 news item by Associated Press reporter and writer James Bacon, Pink is quoted about the extreme cost-cutting effectiveness of using the new Cinemagic process. Our set for the planet Mars cost us a couple of hundred dollars instead of the thousands we had estimated. Pink also estimates in that interview that the movie will be made at half the original cost. Confirming that Invasion of Mars, the film's working title before its release, was a low-budget project. The meager $200,000 production budget cited for The Angry Red Planet may therefore be a credible ballpark figure. Filming for The Angry Red Planet began on September 9, 1959 at Hal Roach Studios in Culver City, California, only a month after Mel Cheer and Pink completed their final draft of the screenplay. Topic. Release American International Pictures released the film in September 1960 with its original running time varying between 83 and 87 minutes. AIP also distributed the film initially as part of double feature billings. At theaters in some regions it was presented with Circus of Horrors, and in other locations it accompanied showings of Beyond the Time Barrier. According to Pink, he had trouble working with AIP, more specifically with the notorious Samuel Z. Arkoff. In a 2005 interview about the release of The Angry Red Planet, Pink said, Neither of us trusted the other, which worked out well because I wouldn't touch him with a ten-foot pole. Jimmy Nicholson was the brains of that operation. With Arkoff, you never got a straight count. Topic. Reception The Angry Red Planet received mixed reviews upon its release. The New York Times film critic Eugene Archer gave the production a negative review, criticizing its depiction of the planet Mars, likening it to a cardboard illustration from Flash Gordon. 
However, not all reviewers in 1959 and early 1960 were critical of the film in general or, in particular, Cinemagic's deficiencies in simulating the terrain, fictitious plant life, and monstrous creatures on Mars. Motion Picture Daily reviewer Samuel D. Burns was enthusiastic at the time about the production, calling it a stimulating experience in suspense and intrigue. He described Cinemagic in his review as a well-conceived optical effect for dramatic impact, an element of the film that he predicts will draw big gross business to the box office. Burns also compliments both forms of filming presented in The Angry Red Planet, as well as its music. Everything seen or experienced outside the spaceship on Mars is depicted in the cinemagic process to symbolize a concept of nature on another planet. The rest of the film's action and background is printed in the normal fashion. Stanley Cortez delivered an expert job of camerawork, in marking the debut of the new Eastman 5250 color, bringing into sharp focus the soft, effective color tones of the film. Paul Dunlap's music contributed its share of mounting interest and suspense in the subject matter for the producers Sid Pink and Norman Maurer. In his 2001 reassessment of The Angry Red Planet, Glenn Erickson of DVD Talk criticizes the film's flat direction, dull script and overuse of stock footage. Erickson does faintly compliment the film for at least coloring scenes of Mars' surface with a red tinge, which in his opinion gives the sequences a credibly alien look. In his 2014 movie guide, Leonard Maltin judges the film to be only average, awarding it 2 out of 4 stars. However, reviewer Bruce Ader of Allmovie is more positive in his appraisal of the film, commending in particular its overall style of direction. Danish born director, screenwriter I. B. Melchior brings a surprisingly light, deft touch to the proceedings, allowing the actors a chance to have fun with their roles especially Gerald Moore, still looking and sounding a bit like Humphrey Bogart, as the stalwart mission commander, and Jack Crucian as the good humored technician in the crew without losing sight of the adventure and the storyline, and meshing it all seamlessly with the special effects-driven sequences. Topic. Home media The Angry Red Planet was first released on DVD by MGM in 2001. A decade later, MGM issued the film on DVD again as part of the multi-feature Midnight Movies single disc collection, which also included The Man from Planet X 1951, Morons from Outer Space 1985, and Alien from L.A. 1988. The Angry Red Planet was released yet again in 2013 by Gaim International on Sci-Fi Classics, another four-movie compilation on a single disc, alongside The Man from Planet X, Beyond the Time Barrier 1960, and The Time Travelers 1964. Topic. References and notes Topic. See also List of American films of 1959 List of films set on Mars Topic. External links The Angry Red Planet at the American Film Institute Catalog The Angry Red Planet on IMDb the Angry Red Planet at Allmovie The Angry Red Planet at the TCM Movie Database